Okay, great. So, uh, welcome to the APS meeting of Only HR Foundation. Only HR is a primarily an informal self-help group of and end of HR professionals, including those in IR and allied professions, as well as researchers and who have passion to do better all the time. And OHR's mission is to actively contribute to the HR function towards developing globally competitive and industry. So, uh, in line with this, uh, today we have arranged a science of psychometrics meeting, uh, a knowledge sharing session, you can say. And uh, today we have uh, Dr. Vishal, Dr. Vishal Sangre from Brentburg. Uh, doctor, uh, he is an BHN and an MA Psychology. Then he is, he is a uh, uh, doctoral scholar from uh, Savitri Bhai Pune University. Uh, Dr. Vishal has 10 years of uh, clinical and accounting experience. NITI, I am a member of change. He is a member of American Psychological Association, ex expert in construction and administration of uh, psychometric assessments, training in the field of emotional intelligence and OD interventions. Uh, and he is member of Committee of Accreditation of Psychometric Test, Indian Institute of Business Psychology. So actually, he had, I have asked him to give his uh, profile in the short. Actually, he has he had done lot many things other than this, but so I have just reduced it, skewed uh, it, kept it. So welcome all of you once again, and uh, uh, I hand it over to Dr. Vishal to take it forward. Dr. Thank Vishal, you. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for this very good introduction and uh, I would also like to thank uh, OHR for organizing this session. Uh, so welcome all to this wonderful evening where we're all been you know uh, in a state of a uh, lot of things happening around us for the past two three months and uh, things around us have been a little uh, uncertain and uncertainty always way, paves way for uh, all and every possibility around us. So having said that, uh, you all work from a very different perspective of handling people, of understanding people, or of managing people, or whatever term you can say, but essentially you are relating with people. And in relation to this particular topic, understanding the other person along with understanding your own self understanding your own persona becomes also much more evident from the perspective of connection to uh, every other individual around you and in that context uh, psychometrics is one such area which helps is us to, in lot many uh, dimensions of a life so essentially today's agenda of our discussion, I would say knowledge sharing as rightly pointed out by only HR group is understanding the psyche of psychometrics, the personality and aptitude test, specific scientific demeanor of psychometrics and the iceberg or brainberg model that we call it. It's application in the organization and maybe if time permits, I would focus on certain traits and the reports that you all did. Uh, in the in in pretext to this session, uh, we've all already sent you a link of assessment, followed by a question answer session. So hope for the next 45 odd minutes that we are gonna stay with each other, I will be able to throw some light on each of these aspects. So what is specifically the core of psychometrics? What is the soul of psychometrics? The idea itself is not new. I mean, it's not something that has propped up out of box. It was there and it existed in the early 20th century. Alfred Binet was the mind behind the first intelligence test that came up in 1925. And this was one of the profound uh, understanding that psychologists over a period of time in measuring the capacities of mind or your behavior have been trying in this endeavor to find some quantification to understanding the traits, the types or the behavior characteristics of humans. And since then, tests have been an ingredient of every dimension of life. Now, the clinical practice of practitioners into psychology or medicine, apart from 
these core areas organizations or industries also have been evaluating candidates on their personality behavior and aptitude for long and this has been the the core of uh, certain very uh, standard business practices across the globe so naturally the question comes to your mind what are the test what are these tests specifically and what is a, a psychometric test or what can we we talk about this test so these are objective and unbiased set of questions and these are not only the questions but a standard set of questions very reliable and valid way of assessing the candidate the assessors present these candidates with a set of questions to answer and now this now the second question that will come to your mind is what are these you know what are the type of questions that, that are asked to the candidate briefly i can tell you like there are two major categories of these question sets or then we will call them as tests and these are personality tests or personality assessments or second is aptitude or ability assessments if you understand these two things let us see what the first half or the personality part means to us personality from a, a very different angle i would say is uh, the the uh, the latin word for uh, you know the origin of this word came from the word persona and persona means mask so personality essentially is the derivation of the from the word persona where the people from theater used to wear masks and they were used to call persona so every time we put across a mask in in other you know in front of people we wear a different kind of personality this was a you know conventional understanding that came of the word personality so it's a projection it's it's a manif it's, it's an expression of something that is happening within you that is deep down within you and that is personality so uh, there are personality traits there are personality types there are trait types and there are personality you know uh, you know uh, larger groups of types which can be clubbed together to assign to a person so this has become an integral part of from the pretext of the uh, organization or industries the employee life cycle uh, uh, in the entire employee life cycle people have been measuring these uh, capacities of the person through the personality from the personality perspective for long and some of the traits that i can definitely tell you are like openness like conscientiousness like extraversion agreeableness or neuroticism which are which are one of the you know one of the strong model of personality the big five factor model that gives us you know along the the other part uh, that we see is the cognitive aspect which is like you know the aspect of uh, the neurocognitive processes that happens in our body uh, in our brain and the third aspect is the skills that we acquire through our job or through knowledge or through experience and this is these roughly can be categorized to these three areas so the next question comes to your mind naturally all of us ask maybe casually or maybe professionally can personality change and a lot of people have their own understanding of this what is the basis of personality or rather can you change in 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 other words you also call this as nature that can your nature change there is there a medicine for your nature or maybe personality so the answer is maybe so why i'm saying maybe is because there has been this debate happening all through your uh, you know understanding of whichever science you can go through that is nature versus nurture nature gives you a predetermined set of personality traits or personality types this is prewired or maybe genetically uh, composed in your own being and these are influenced by your biological factors or maybe specifically as i called it as genetic uh, inheritance and second thing that comes to you is through various interventions or influences or experiences or learnings or what you can say as uh, uh, what in a simple term is therapy you can alter your personality you can have a change in your traits or in your types and this is specifically coming from the nurture part of your bringing now these classical nature nurture debate has been a uh, part of this discourse for long and a lot of papers published since you know uh, early couple of decades from now have evidently put forth that yes there is a definite change that can be brought upon in 
the personality traits of an individual through a very strong intervention and that is the nurture thing that we can call as. So is there a distinction between personality and behavior? What do you mean by behavior? What do you mean by personality? And subsequently are these two different things or are they one and the same thing? So I would say uh, in a simple words, personality is one of the important, uh, what you say, uh, inner thing that solidifies uh, as as early as in your early childhood. Some say it solidifies at 5 years, some say at 12 years, some say at 20 years. So what you are at early life, uh, what you have ingrained in your early life or wired in your early life is the depiction that you will have you'll have for your next successive decades that you live in your life. And these are typically called as personality. But on the other hand, uh, what you express or what you can manage or what you can curtail or regulate or channelize is called as your behavior. Uh, so personality is uh, is, is, is deep-seated values, attitudes, aspiration and beliefs. But definitely, uh, these are core to your personality. It is difficult for you to change these things over a period of time, but that does not mean that it does not change. So you can, for, for example, a person who is uh, who, who has an attitude of anger, who has a deep-seated attitude of anger, but through training, the person is able to channelize his or her uh, understanding of the situation or the people around him and then can curtail the outburst of anger and this is called as behavior so behavior can be curtailed channelized or directed in a particular way whereas personalities remain at the core of it so if you roughly want to say that uh, these are two distinct uh, things but uh, they are very closely intervened with each other so the second half of psychometrics revolved around the aptitude or the ability test and these are uh, roughly can call you called from the perspective of the intelligence or the general intelligence that the individual possesses. So uh, early as early as I said early as early as 19th century the advent of intelligence understanding of uh, measurement of intelligence came into picture and the pioneering work in this factor was in this area was done by Spearman. Spearman came up with the general factor, the general intelligence factor, which is the underlying commonality, underlying baselining, underlying, uh, you can say, factor for all the aptitude that you show later in your life. So the consolidated 21st century uh, understanding of aptitude or intelligence also base their foundations on Spearman's general intelligence factor with some variation in understanding so over a period of time uh, uh, people like Howard Gardner who came up with the understanding of multiple intelligence or maybe for that matter uh, there were uh, there were uh, uh, different uh, tripartite model of uh, the you know uh, the intelligence but essentially the baselining of everything will come to one of the underlying commonality of general intelligence and then the specific intelligence can build upon them or the aptitude can build upon them. So modern researchers continue to expand the concept despite the early con you know, criticism of the same thing but uh, more or less the concept remains the same. So these also indicate that it has a very strong influence on your performance, on your on your uh, you know work that you are doing through your profession or life and these two halves these two halves the personality half or the ability half together will lead you to make certain very very informed decisions about yourself or for that matter from the employer's perspective of the employee that they are hiring so if you see the both the halves what the, what do what do they mean from the organizational context from the organizational context, psychometrics has a lot to do with testing both before and after the employment. This is very critical. I'm telling you why. Because you get an insightful understanding of this. Let this let come to that part in the later part of the session. But considering the personality parts, look at the personality and the behavioral test account for the assessment of traits and attribute to the positive impact of the individual based on the environment that exists within the organization to begin with. So it has to do with a lot of uh, understanding of how the person behaves, how the person has got the attitude or what are his interests or inclinations or motives that all part forms, forms into personality. Well, the aptitude part is measurement 
covering the understanding of individuals intelligence and abilities to acquire new skills be becoming a future indicator of high performance so if a person is high in aptitude the person will show definite you know uh, understanding of acquiring new skills or perform high performance in the near future so it has got a predictive value attached to it so both these halves become critical from the perspective of the organizational context so understanding if you see that these these are one of the two of two halves of the psychometric test what really is the science behind psychometrics and i would like to uh, draw your attention towards the specifics of the impact of culture which is critical component in determining the business success so what culture you adhere to what cultural uh, bringing or maybe culture is a very very broad term which includes two facets one facet is the obvious which is visible part of your tree layer the discernible part which can be you know uh, pointed out which can be exhibited which is visible the easily visible cultural elements that could either be experienced or understood by a different level of interaction with the individual whereas there is a hidden part of your personality or if your ability or if your persona in total which relates to the cultural elements difficult to discern under normal circumstances because these are the undercurrent of your personality but those have a very strong relevance from your performance or exhibition part of your you know various skill sets in your organization so these two distinct areas ha are you know one of one of the central th themes of what we are measuring and then look at this picture that you can see on your screen uh, you will roughly see a iceberg which has got the hidden part below the surface of the water and then there is a obvious part which is visible part which is above the surface of the water the, this analogy explains us the structure or the understanding of your persona which goes vis a vis uh, uh, everybody uh, uh, every human individual that we find so visible cultural elements like actions which are routine processes manners behavior rituals or ceremonies that you do and then there are structures which which comes through the through the organizations through the products through the designs through the mission statements through the physical environment that you are into now these two things are obvious everybody can see this your actions are visible your structures are visible to everybody but what about invisible cultural elements which are unconscious feelings which are your shared cognition that you see uh, you know within yourself or maybe certain uh, presuppositions as assumptions thoughts maybe beliefs that are below the surface which you have foundations of your behavior built upon them and these are the invisible cultural elements below it so these two discernible or obvious or visible cultural elements and uh, indiscernible which is invisible cultural elements form the basis of your overall personality in that context the iceberg model efficiently defines like the two competencies you know use of competencies or components of job that are reflected in the behavior observable in the workplace like skill aptitude ability knowledge and personality all factor into performance uh you know you, you can compute them you can understand quantify them and uh, understand what all outcome can be uh, expected from the employee so if you roughly see what are the things we can categorize in uh you know, three or four or five basic areas one is knowledge identifies the learning and information within a person traits like characteristics consistent uh, and the consistent responses to the information or situations skill that is the ability to perform certain tasks motives like emotions physiological needs impulses desires that prompt your, your actions and the self concepts or values everybody has got this understanding of self so and a set of values which are very personal these are your attitude your self image and your value system that you've grown across so if you see this uh, then you see the and now you've known certain aspect of your personality of your ability and now you will you look at the measurement tool and how do you see that this measurement tool that you are using or this uh, questionnaire that you are using is roughly falling into the category of standardized testing so this could be composed of true or false maybe the questions questionnaire given to the user could be composed of true or false or multiple choice or authentic assessments or essays 
and it is possible to shape this questionnaire into a standardized test provided you have got basically these three things coming into uh, the standardization process one is the nature of the reliability i'll, I'll talk about this factor uh, as we go ahead what is reliability and then the understanding of the validity of the test and then the importance of norming norming is one of the essential process of you know basing your baselining your uh, scores so what is the uh, you know this validity and reliability factor of the test now these determine the quality of the psychometric test so if you ask me what is reliability reliability is the dependability of the test result so if the if the person does an assessment now how well are you able to depend on the report, re result uh, if the person does the assessment after some time like you know two or three months apart or four months or five months apart so are these results consistent amongst themselves first thing or whether in the first instance are am i able to depend on the test reports that is the reliability reliability thing the next thing is the validity validity means there are various types of validity the basic function of validity uh, revolves around one important thing and that is are you measuring what you want to measure uh, let me give you an example here so if you want to measure say uh, uh, the take a physical world example if you want to measure a uh, weight of an individual and and you make the person stand on a weighing scale uh, that is fine that is correct you are measuring the weight of the person but if you want to measure a mass of the person and if you make him stand on the weighing scale that does not justify what you are measuring so the instrument is wrong for measuring mass in that context the instrument may, must be valid for measurement of what you are measuring so the questionnaire if you want to measure motivation of the individual the questionnaire should be directed or may they must have a very strong uh, uh, you know uh, coefficient of measuring towards uh, what it intends to measure what the tool intends to measure and that is validity now uh, if you look for any test that is happening around you or you look for any assessment that people give you as a part of psychometric test ask for them what is the reliability what is the validity of the particular test first thing uh, there is always a very strong technical uh, uh, aspect attached to it ask for the manuals art for the construction measures and everything about the test so you can roughly uh, look for the coefficients here the ones which are like you know the excellent coefficient value for reliability is 0 0.90 and above similarly validity coefficient the 0.35 and above are highly beneficial tests to be you know taken for this is the determining the quality of the test from the psycho uh, of the psychometric uh, uh, nature and uh, then the norming part i would like to focus on the norming part the norming part are uh, norms are uh, the uh, the uh, the aspect of you know people with similar characteristics so if you want to measure say uh, understanding of people of, of, of a particular age of a particular uh, gender of a particular uh, you know profession of a particular geography now these becomes the norms of baselining the scores of that particular test now this is roughly called as cohort so cohort representing the uh, by people with similar characteristics and this becomes a norm of that person of that, uh, that of that group of that test so uh, a, a representative sample uh, which you are looking the test to run on uh, is is the is the is the act uh, the characteristics of that sample is called as the norm so similarly looking characteristics to have a more dependable results in in predicting or in uh, getting the informed decisions from a psychometric test so these are three important characteristics of the uh, quality of the psychometric test the next question comes to your mind is if this is so if this is the scientificity of the psychometric test uh, is it possible to fake a psychometric test or maybe you can you can you give fake responses or say uh, what you can say is you, can you be uh, gaming the psychometric test so 
I would say the degree of fake responses largely contributes to the quality of psychometric testing in inverse proportionality. So what will happen is fake responses will compromise the the quality of the psychometric test, and it implies to the uh, uh, you know a certain degree the test should be able to manage this uh, this this aspect of fake responses within itself, and this particular uh, management is called as uh, you can say response style mechanism so uh, you can examine the extent to which the test is prone to deliberate resp responses distortion and that is where uh, the aspect of uh, you know uh, fake responses or various types of responses can be curtailed towards the end suppose you have a scale uh, as you look on the screen from strongly agree to strongly disagree you will find that these are the possible types of response mechanism that may come up with the respondents so from genuine responses to the careless type of responding to central tendency to extreme responding to social socially desirable responses are the patterns through which the respondent responds to the questions given in the particular test so uh, if you find that if your respondent has given genuine responses you will be able to easily flag them if uh, you know as genuine responses but otherwise you can definitely through various algorithms find that uh, the responses are not genuine and you can definitely not uh, you know be uh, getting through the interpretation of that particular test further so this is about the uh, the gaming or maybe the you can compromising the responses of the psychometric test so why does an organization need psychometric test so this question will, will normally pop up in your mind why do, what is the necessity of the psychometric test in our organization so if you have come across these questions are you looking for tools to make more efficient recruitment decisions want to assess the suitability of a potential employee need to further develop the team you have need to motivate your employees to retain or retain your most valuable employee the solution to all these and many more such problems or challenges is psychometric assessment and i can roughly say that that can be categorized in the tree that is in front of you application of psychometric test in an organization which is from recruitment to tra training and development to performance evaluation to employee engagement now these aspects further can be like you know for uh you know classified into training identification training effectiveness and assessment center development so these aspects or these areas roughly will have the application of psychometric test in them uh, i would say an informed decisions from the perspective of the user from the perspective of the employer from the perspective of the hr whether this person is suitable to this particular job role or not or maybe what is the competency that is demonstrated by the individual towards this particular uh, job or maybe uh, towards this particular function uh, will be will be an indicator that can be pointed out through these kind of tests so all in all uh, right from the entry point uh, to forming teams to forming uh, to identifying the training needs to finding the performance of the individual and to engage the uh, employee further all these areas can have a very successful application of psychometric test in them so if you see this uh, uh, this will bring us to one of the important uh, you know sections of this session is that you all have most of you have done your psychometric one of the tests that we sent to you and you must be wondering like you know some of us give a very good feedback but let us uh, let me uh, show you the the report that we did and how these principles can be applied to this test all in all so i am showing you a small uh, you know a sample report hope you are able to see my screen yogesh yes yes Dr. yes yes yeah. yeah. so if you see at the uh, uh, first executive summary report that was put to you uh, uh, there are two types of reports sent to you one is an executive summary where you'll find the uh, on the left hand side corner of the report the gender occupation age country and education which i i said the norm group the the cohort that we talk about from the perspective of the norming and then you also find the response style of the individual that is given here whether the person is given responses which are genuine or maybe certain other parameters if they are, they are not genuine they will be flagged as different as different responses so these two mechanism mechanism put into this uh, test uh, you can uh, doctor 
Yeah, sorry, Dr. Vishal, I think you have to share the complete screen. Yeah. We are still seeing yeah. the last, yeah, last slide of PowerPoint. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a minute. Okay, now? Yeah, now we can... Okay, okay fine. So this is the first page of the report and that is the executive summary of the report. And as I discussed earlier uh, in the first 20-30 minutes of the session, you'll find that some principles that you can readily see on this report and the, uh, the one principle that you see is of the norm group, which is gender, occupation, age, country and education which forms the basis of the benchmarking of the raw scores of the or the responses of the individual similarly you also find a response style mechanism put into the report which talks about whether the individual has given genuine responses or 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 are are these you know socially desirable a certain kind so there are other kind of response style similarly you also find two broad areas made in determining the uh, the outcome of the uh, report based on a 10 point scale the strength of the individual and the training re areas required by the individual you, if you refer to your report if you have done the assessment you will come to know about 10 areas that we evaluated in this report and one of such areas is, is like you know psychological ownership mental focus openness to change client servicing cognitive planning positive effectivity task commitment verbal ability achievement motivation grit these are you know, out of uh, uh, out of many other such traits, these traits were selected and put in this assessment to evaluate uh, these parameters on a ten point scale. You also get to know the general impression, like you know how the candidate stands and the success profile, which is on a percentage scale. The su subsequent part of the report talks on how to read the report. Like for example, the detailed analysis, the standard report gives you. Uh, the test details and again the demographic norms and the pages will talk about how how you can read this report further so this uh, two you know three four pages will give you an understanding of the norm group the the cohort that you belong to and then the understanding of certain parameters or you know certain terminologies in the test let us go to the first screen as uh, the first trait which is like for example task commitment here the left hand side corner shows you the name of the trait and the right hand side corner shows you the score on a 10 point scale now you'll find here there is a definition of the trait given below below it is a result chart which shows your raw score the attempted score uh, you know questions in that particular trait this 10 score on a you know uh, on a 10 point scale the mean of that cohort particular cohort and the z score z score is a standard deviation from which you are deviated uh, from the mean of your cohort that is to say what is your performance and that is depicted in this 10 score so if you see here on a graph you will find uh, that is depicted as a as a graded scale 0 to 2 is very low 2 to 4 is low 4 to 6 is average 6 to 8 is high 8 to 10 is very high similarly based on this entire understanding of what your score is in that particular trait the interpretation and analysis is made of that particular trait and then there is a self-help guide given to each of you to how to look into the improvement of that particular trait in a particular way similarly you also get to know the the mentors guide the managers or the mentors who are you know looking after the development or maybe the HR who are looking after the development of the employees will be helpful by this manager's guide and all of these traits are explained in the similar well you know fashion all through the report now if you if you ask me some of the trait because we have done some these assessment with all of the participants here some of most of you almost 80 plus people have done this assessment task commitment is your ability to you know spend your learning and uh, you know spend your time in learning and perfecting skills with a specific area and if you see for this this has got a very strong indication towards how well you will be able to perform how well are you performing in that particular area similarly uh, you have a verb now this is a this is the ability part which has got to do with your understanding the comprehension of words and ideas specifically relating to your critical reasoning uh, grammar and vocabulary of english language so here is where you find the score uh, you know given and you'll be able to also look for improvement areas
thus the traits which are difficult to understand like achievement motivation the the type of motivation we generally find is self motivation and external motivation or intrinsic or external the other kind of motive the third kind of motivation which it talks about is like how far like you know your success or your attainment leads you to further uh, as you know att- you know uh, further uh, motivate you yourself to achieve more in your life so your achievement until from your past or from your uh, career so far uh, is 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 that pushing you towards the achievement that you want to do or attainment that you want to do in in for in future so that is the aspect of achievement motivation that you see here the, the fourth trait is of ownership now this is a very critical area where every employer will be looking from Uh, in their employees for example how well the individual feels that he belongs to this organization or part of the organization is his or uh, maybe he is he, his progress is the organization's progress in the same context you'll also look for the loyalty factors or the or the you know cultural aspects through which the employee will be able to devote his or her resources strengths and competencies towards the growth of the organization so that is psychological ownership the next thing that comes into play is the grit grit is a long term passion long term passion is you know you have this ability to persevere for for, for over a period of time on long term projects which which require your perseverance which requires your focus to be kept for a longer duration that that is what we measure in terms of grit here and then the next trait is like uh, the mental focus it's a cognitive ability again you see the attention that you put uh, in your task completely uh, it it is the ability to stay focused in a particular uh, task for 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 you know um, make sure that you accomplish that task you know very efficiently and that is where mental focus comes to, comes into play The, the next thing is about your openness to change this is one of the big five factor model uh, you know f- uh, factor traits it is how uh, you know you are open for change your attitude your behavior towards adopting or accepting the change around you so you should be open you should be able to accommodate the change that is happening around you and that is what is you know we measure in this perspective uh the next thing is client servicing this relates to the sales area or maybe the customer satisfaction uh, that the individual can provide uh this is particularly a trait which is looked after in the in the areas of if if people belong to uh, this area of sales the rapport that the you build or working uh, connection that you build build with each customer that is that is what we measure from uh, client servicing the last thing that we measure in this ability i suppose it's the last thing uh, the cognitive planning that is your your understanding of how you plan things in advance everything happens twice once in your head second second in your action so this aspect of cognitive planning is measured here you this is followed by a sorry there's a last trait which is uh, positive effectivity which is uh for how how long in a day how long in a week how long in a month are you able to stay uh, optimistic or maybe how are you relating to your surroundings hope in hope or in optimism that is what uh, positive effectivity measures so this and all will be given in a result summary uh in a spider graph the left hand side uh, talks about the strength while right hand side talks about your training areas or the strengths that you require to grow if you see in this entire aspect like from the uh, uh, from the from the built of the psychometric test to the to the particular report that we have i have shared with you of yours uh, i will also uh, want to invite certain questions from you now like if you have gone through the understanding what all things uh, uh, you know uh, must have pondered your mind and maybe if i am able to able to answer uh, as of now because i have certain questions that i have received earlier through the registrations i may want to uh, just uh, throw some light on them uh, one of the questions predominantly asked was uh, which tests are most successful effective and most used so i would say the most successful and effective tests are the ones which have got a strong uh we say statistical power in terms of or or we can say standardized uh, uh tools which have got strong reliability validity and they have been effective over a period of time demonstrating their face validity as well so 
so these are the, uh, uh, the, the, the there are various tests which are used across the globe the ones which have demonstrated their standardized uh, uh, you know strengths in terms of reliability and validity are the most successful ones uh, the one of the questions was asked by Aarti asking like is, is is it useful in manufacturing industry yes definitely manufacturing or otherwise whichever industry that you belong to humans demonstrate the abilities uh, the efficiencies that can definitely be efficiently evaluated through psychometrics. So there are various tools which can measure. For example, in manufacturing industry, you required cognitive traits like speed, like like uh, attention, like uh, uh, the the working memory that can be evaluated of the shop floor workers, right from the blue collar uh, workers to to the workers who are into you know uh, working into offices which require more meticulous you know cognitive uh, abilities so definitely these are useful in industries manufacturing industries so one question asked was by aditi rao asking like how accurate are psychometric tests yes definitely i i, I must have answered this in the entire uh, you know uh, presentation uh, psychometric test definitely have a strength of uh, significance or strength of you can say accuracy again which relate to say uh, the what you can say roughly is uh, out of 100 if i measure there is a level of significance or level of uh, say sensitivity which is 0.95 or 0.99 that means in 100 i can go wrong for five times or i can go wrong for say one time depending on how sensitively or how statistically you are measuring uh, your measurement tool is strong one of the questions asked by vivek deshpande yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, very good stuff. Uh, doctor, we are getting some online questions. Yeah, on go ahead. Chat. Go ahead. It should I? Uh, can you read? Uh, can read yeah, you? you can read. Then I will be able to answer. Yeah, there is one question from Mr. Kalpesh. Um, he is asking and requesting to throw more light on STEM score and its relation with mean. Great. So let me share the screen again. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay. Can you see? Can you see the report? Yes. Yes, we can see the report now. Yes. Okay. So uh, let us come to this. Okay. Now you see here uh, the respondent has responded. Uh, and the score uh, for a set of questions for cognitive planning and uh, this raw score measured for that respondent uh, on a five point scale these were obviously on a five point scale was 70 this was a raw score unprocessed and un non-standard score which is a raw score now if you have to see uh, how it is getting into the sten score uh, we have to these this goes through two or three uh, important statistical processes one is identifying the uh, the mean of that cohort so all the respondents in that particular cohort the the mean for them are uh, you know cal calibrated and if you see here this respondent has scored higher in terms of raw score from the mean of that particular cohort if this is the mean this is the raw score now this is again uh, we also understand the standard deviation of the of that particular group or particular cohort or particular norm that uh, we are measuring so after getting these two important parameters of uh, uh, statistics that is standard deviation and mean uh, we derive one of the standard scores and that is Z score Z score is again one of the standard scores which has got a range of minus 3 to plus 3 and this is again not understood from a layman's perspective we do not understand how what Z means it is a very standard uh, deviation with the mean 0 so once we get this mean out of that particular cohort we convert this mean into sten score and here is where we can understand understand from a scale of 1 to 10 what this particular uh, sten or standard 10 sten is standard 10 score now this can this z score can be converted into a stenine score or a percentage uh, you know a percentile score or or a t score for that matter 
but mostly uh, you find for the understanding this particular assessment uses a uh, strength score which is like 6.91 for this individual that is to say this person is performing better from most of the individuals in that particular uh, group i hope it answers your question sir yeah yes so i'm taking some random questions one yeah. interesting question is uh, how to identify the manipulation of answers while reading the report particularly answered by the cxo level candidates okay so um, the manipulation happens at two levels one is uh, while the responses are given which are given either uh, on a socially design you know extreme responses like you know you put out like that you are very good in uh, in the eyes of people that you want to show you are best in class or something like that that is one type of responses that the respondent gives and the other is completely forging the test that is to say the person is not giving the test himself so there are two types of two different types of uh, you know what do you say uh, uh, compromises that can happen so one thing that the user is not giving the test himself is different and that can be uh, you know taken care through proctoring either through video proctoring or maybe uh, uh, the if it is an online test like the cloud based assessment or a computer based test you can lock the ip uh, stop sharing the screen with the individual and everything so that is <clears throat> one thing that can be addressed but the responses the re individual gives typically these responses are you know uh, through through the as i said that there is a response style theory which plays at the background while we are evaluating the assessment scores so if the if on a scale of a of a likert scale which is from strongly disagree to strongly agree the patterns are either extreme or say centrally placed or maybe with with uh, careless type of responding haphazard type of responding these are flagged so whichever whether it is cxo or whether it's a it's a entry level employee uh, this can be understood from that perspective i hope that makes sense yes thank you doctor uh, another interesting question has come up uh, regarding the current situation how how this tool will help hr in current critical situation on account of covid 19 okay uh, i would say uh, some traits that are of immense importance here uh, which uh, which should be which should be looked for in this particular situation apart from the traits given in this test there are traits like first resilience second positive effectivity third uh, adaptability and fourth emotional stability that has to be taken uh, care in understanding what how the individual is behaving or performing in these challenging times but apart from that uh, uh, you must also look at three aspects like the aspects of anxiety aspects of uh, 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 sadness uh, which can culminate into some kind of depression and the aspects of uh, uh, you can say stress that the individual faces all through these testing times so all these can be measured to plan a proper intervention from the employer's perspective or from the organization's perspective towards employees so definitely there is a, the so if you have to bring about a change in a particular behavior of the individual a standard measurement or understanding yourself in a better way paves the way forward it will help you to form that ground that that buying in with the uh, individual to let you uh, uh, establish the foundations of change so definitely not the, if you see the traits there are there are different traits that has to be measured but eventually psychometrics will have a very strong uh, aspect towards this yes i hope that is answered yeah yeah i think there is one more question um, is any training required to conduct and to do assessments of the test okay uh, there are two or three levels of uh, you know competencies or maybe three levels of uh, skills that are used in uh, you know this kind of uh, assessments one is uh, 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 to be a test administrator second is to be a test interpreter uh, there is a report interpreter and the third is a test construction expert so from the uh, if you have a basic understanding the level from which you can definitely uh, make sure that you'll be able to administer the particular tool you have to just 
understand that uh, the user manual of that particular test has got all the precautions all the uh, no, uh, the guidelines on making sure how you can administer the test from the interpretation part you have to go through certain kind of training that how to interpret this particular test or this particular tra traits in a particular way and from the construction parts it's a, it's a specialized uh, you know area so you have to spend a good amount of training in construction and uh, interpretation part of the report yes yeah, I think uh, we got one question from Mr. Sachin. Uh, probably he can unmute himself and uh, ask in detail, but I will read it for him. What will be effectivity of this test if we take it one on one instead of online? Okay. So, uh, okay. So there are there are two or three different trends that have been going through all along the testing arena for over a period of time so uh, as i said uh, the the environment or the area of uh, psychometric testing has been evolving for almost five decades now and classically speaking first of the areas first of the very prominent areas where the paper pencil type of testing the the one you are just talking about but over a period of time that uh, the 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 things like uh, you know the computer based assessments or the internet based assessment things came into picture so the scalability was a uh, was one of the because the industrial revolution or large group groups working together that became an essential part but you while you are suggesting a one on one thing some of the tests like the projective type of test like the sentence completion test or or a, or a west uh, a rochers ink ball test definitely require one on one administration you cannot do these tests online but the test that you did on uh, particularly that you see uh, this has no uh, you know depreciation in the quality or effectivity while you do it online because these are developed for this particular uh, you know uh, area because we follow there are there are, there are classical norms that the International Test Commission publishes for different kind of, kind of envir test environments. One is the uh, internet based uh, uh, assessment, the other is uh, computer based assessment. These are fundamentally two different things. And the third is a paper pencil or the one on one uh, assessments. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Sachin, do we want to go for another one question or it's over to you, Mr. Sachin uh, Lange? Yeah, uh, Doctor, I have one question, last question. Yeah. So, uh, can this uh, test can be customized to based on the industry? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Like some organic. Yeah, let me tell you. So, what has happened in the in the in the uh, in the in the age or the times that we are living in? Uh, organizations are growing in a scale, or people are working at a huge scale that was never seen before in groups. Like thousands of people work together in groups. So, uh, different organization. Every organization is using unique in its culture, uh, unique it's in offerings, in unique it's in uh, in its various aspects. So. Uh, uh, definitely these tests can be customized, benchmarked and also delivered a, a, a basis the required uh, traits or competencies that the organization wants to measure in the employee. So uh, this tool particularly TradeFit has got a huge competencies like 90 plus traits where the user can have a first level mix and match of the uh, traits altogether and uh, for my assessment and deliver it to the user. So that uh, is a possibility now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thank I you. I hope there are no further questions. Are there any questions? There are a lot of questions actually, but I'll be able to answer most of the questions through emails, if not now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe you can, uh, uh, doctor, uh, if you can just share your email address on the chat. Box. I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, so meanwhile, I uh, request our trustee, Mr. Prashant. Uh, we have another trustee also, Shailendra Deshpande, Ripin Nati, sir. So, Prashant, may I request you to uh, conclude the session, please? Yeah, yeah. Now we are at the end of the session. Thanks, Dr. Vishal Sangre, for a very thought provoking session. In this uh, critical situation on account of COVID 19, definitely your today's session will help. All members, those attended, 
to play his and her role uh, effectively thank you right? thank you thank you sir what about what, what about audience they are with me yeah yes sir okay yeah yes sir yeah anybody anybody wants to give feedback just one or two feedback from audience please i'll be happy pratiba you can unmute yourself yeah yeah so yeah uh, thank you dr star for i mean it's what it was quite informative mm, but uh, we all have time constraints so but i was more curious about uh, what all overview we have given you have given in the session so i am in the uh, hr from our central years and be uh, uh, this process but not very in depth so i I'm glad that I got some insight. I mean, after an earlier session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. But Thank you. See, definitely one hour is not sufficient for this uh, such type of uh, subject. Absolutely. So those who, who want to uh, more information, they can directly contact Dr. Vishal Sangre. He has already shared his, uh, or I will request them to share his uh, mobile number and also mail ID. And also yeah. the presentation uh, which you shared, which you have showed to us, that also you can share with the Sachin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that also we can share with our member. Yeah, that will help them. Vishal, uh, Doctor Vishal has the email addresses of all, so you can customize or uh, you can yeah. uh, send a brief version of the presentation. Uh, I'll do that. I'll do information that. which you would like. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, that you can share with. Yeah. I'll do that. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, and last but not the least, we are thankful to all members. Even though today is Sunday, they are attending. That is great. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Chalo, once again, thanks Thank to you. all. Once again, thanks to all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Bye. Bye.